Good evening, Calcutta. Welcome to your favorite show, The World's a Stage. And here's your favorite RJ, AB. Broadcasting from the Carpedium Studio, Calcutta, the Art and Natyakala Academy present Tata Kim, a tragic interpretation of Surpanaka, sponsored by classmates and Samsung India. Return with me now to the pages of the ancient epics. Turn out your lights and move to the glow of your radio dials for today's presentation, Tata Kim. Supanaka is Savana's sister, she is the princess of Lanka and she is the queen of Tandaka. She is the queen of, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. she is the queen of Tandaka, she is Ravana's sister. And, 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 and she is, she is Lavlon, she is Lavlon, she is lonely, lonely. She is to live under a dominating and affluent brother. And the little boy, attended. perhaps the only one who had taken an interest in academics in that affluent household had his exams and in a secluded room he was busy learning. Supanaka is Ravana's sister, the Queen of Tandaka. She has to be under dominating and a twin brother and her needs are unattended. She's a she is a queen queen of queen of queen of Tandaka. Queen of Tandaka. Oh let's be kept by pencil, pencil. Oh yeah, yeah, it's dead, yes. And so yeah. Supanaka is Ravana's sister, Queen of Lanka, and she is the she is the Queen of Dandaka and the Princess of Lanka. The door in the farthest end of the corridor was slammed with a shut. A young woman dashed through the corridor, her hair loose and disheveled, her black called garment shining in the brightly lit corridor. The fishtail train of her dress flying on the dark crimson carpet. As she passed the little boy's room, he stopped repeating his lines for a moment, looked up, and again started memorizing. The girl opened the door on the right, stepped inside the large and lavish restroom. Leaning on the locked door, she broke down, letting out a blood curdling shriek that echoed through the restroom, tears flowing freely, smudging her mascara. Opening the silver coated tap of the sink, she splashed water on her face and she looked up into the gold plated baroque mirror. I just wanted a confidant, someone with whom I could share the pain of those dark nights sleeping alone, the happiness of those dreams where my wishes were fulfilled and the secrets of those gloom shrouded days when I would sit across the estate's window and the maids would plait my hair for an evening party. I, I the most beautiful of all girls, desired the human touch to which I had grown oblivious in this large, pseudo-royal palatial estate. The estate and its taunting legacy was built by my brother, and under his opulence, I wrought it, my ardent desire to open up, remaining ever unrequited. I had no friends. Who would? Who would when you are so rich, filthy, stinking rich? She opened callously her diamond studded necklace, the pearls scattering on the floor. Her dark chocolate skin shined in the mirror as she splashed more water on her face, perhaps to erase what had happened. I saw them in the party. The two of them? Boys, handsome, composed, shoulders broad and the faces like the ever youthful Endymion. Around them, there was an aura that said they were trustworthy and my heart said they could give me, they could give me what my brother and the comforts of the palace could never. Tell me, was I wrong? Was I wrong to desire so? Was I wrong to want to confide? Was I wrong to find an end to my boredom? To relieve my life and be free? To experience the world outside? Was my heart wrong to desire for a foreign and different touch to quench its thirst for love? Was I wrong? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, okay, but... Uh... 
I already have uh, someone to whom I have given my heart. Perhaps my brother could be your best companion. And the older of the two, to whom I approached first, pointed to a woman. I didn't see her till then, like a lotus bud, tender, soft, and her complexion a milk white. I smiled at her and faced the younger brother. He refused. I smiled and eagerly faced the older one to persuade him once more. He refused, citing the same reason. I smiled as he again pointed to the women. She looked at me, her eyes like a doe, made me envious. Until then, I knew only I was beautiful. I turned to the younger sibling, the older one, the younger one. I felt humiliated. I looked at my brown skin, felt so inferior. Was she, was she as rich as I am? I sniggered. The boys let out a sigh, perhaps asking me to leave. I couldn't take it. It seemed they were doing it intentionally. And in a fit of, in a fit of untamed rage, I pounced at the fair woman strangling her neck. My dark fingers and her silver skin created a unique contrast. She was the source of my failure today, wasn't she? She pushed me, and I saw the younger brother hurling towards me. A grin it was. Clasping the sides of her head, she broke down, and relentless tears poured down her cheeks. I, I felt a stinging pain. Blood spilled, staining my dress. And the shattered pride pained more. I ran enraged, lost, broken and alienated. She screamed, picked up the goblet kept on the granite slab and flung it on the mirror. It shattered like her hopes that ached to be recognized, to be appreciated. As the pieces of glass fell down with a clink on the basin, she looked up. Her voice choked. What shall I answer when they would ask? Tatakin, 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 Holding her head, she screamed as voices in her were baited. to her downfall her anger led to her downfall and she saw in waters of Godavari her own reflection she saw her own reflection in waters of Godavari and found that her nose was chopped off her nose was chopped off and she sat devastated she sat devastated her nose was chopped off and and, and as she sat devastated saw in reflection in waters of Godavari that devastated Sita, she, Sita Ram, the little she boy Sita had Ram, almost Ram. completed his syllabus for tomorrow he was just revising so as to make sure that he didn't miss out on important points. To answer. She is unable to answer as the world throws questioning glances at her, we are asking her what had happened. And therefore, Sulpanakalanka's princess, the queen of Bandaka, Ravana's sister, meets a bitter hand at the hand of Lakshmana. She had just wanted to. This is Sulpanaka's, this is Sulpanaka's story, the uh, Queen of Lanka, Princess, and she is a German princess. She is, um, uh, yeah, she is the Queen of Bandaka, Lanka, Princess, Ravana's sister, Ravana's sister, standing in front of the broken mirror, engulfed in a plethora of emotions that pulled her down to deep caverns of knot. She looked up. A lost look lingered on her once beautiful brown face. How would she face the world? She tried to gather her thoughts and her nose fractured by the vase bled profusely. She stared at her own reflection in the mirror in the waters of Godavari. Her nose chopped off. She screamed. Surpanakha screamed.
You had been listening to Tata Kim, an art and Nautical Academy presentation sponsored by classmates in Samsung India and broadcasted from the Carpedium studio. Good night and pleasant dreams. Stay tuned to Radio Carpedium for the frequency is yours.